Hey, this is Nicole with Own Your Mama Co. And we are a company designed to help the beginning entrepreneur start and grow their photo booth business. With that, here are three things you can do before you start your photo booth business. This is for somebody who is looking into the photo booth business. Maybe they haven't clicked purchase on their photo booth yet. This video is for you. These are some of the initial things that you can do before you actually go out there and start your business. So number one, the very first step is to actually set up your business. So there are three important sub steps in this first one being figure out your business name. Try and think of something unique and memorable when thinking up your business name. The first thing I really want you to do is take a really good look at other photo booth owners in your area and take note of their name so you don't copy them. It would really suck if you decided you wanted to be posy photo booth and then you saw your neighbor is already has that company name. Secondly, think of a way to incorporate your city, state, or region if you can in this. If not, at the very, very least, incorporate the word photo booth in the name. This will help a ton with SEO as you move forward. If you have even a saying that maybe is emotionally relatable to you, like for example, own your moment co, that's my company, or own the moment booth, it was has a very deep meaning for me, which is why I went with that. So that's also an option for you. Also, while you're doing your research, make sure your name isn't already taken or trademarked. I know we've talked about this, but I really wanna hone in on this. You don't wanna get into legal trouble as you grow if someone has trademarked your favorite name or taken the Google listing already. Also, do a search on Instagram. Do a search everywhere for your name and make sure it hasn't already been taken. You can also visit TESS if you Google that test. It's a trademark search website that allows you to search for trademark names that are already existing. All right, next is to register your company with your state. And this may look different uh, depending where you are in the world, but for most of us, it will look like filing an LLC. You can file an LLC under your personal name, your new business name, or something else entirely if you want to. If you have specific questions about filing your LLC or registering your business, definitely reach out to your local accountant for guidance. You're also going to need one as your business starts to grow. Next is setting up your social media handles. It is now time to grab those social media handles with your new business name. You don't have to start posting now, don't worry, but at the very least claim that handle. You can let it sit and then when you're ready, you can start setting it all up. Next, I recommend setting up your business email address. Sometimes you can handle this part of the process when you start to work on your website, which we'll talk about in a second, but at the very least, get some sort of email going so that you can start to reach out to clients or have your clients reach out to you in the very beginning stages. You'll also need one to kind of keep all of your business emails as you start to um, set up your business. So having a place where it can all go that's separate from your personal is important. In the future, as you grow, it's best to have an email address that includes your business name, like hello at myphotoboothcompany.com or info at myphotoboothcompany.com. That will really set you up as being legitimate and make you look much more professional than maybe your competition. Okay, now that we have set up your business, we can move on to the next part, which is pricing. Everyone loves to talk about money and this pricing part is very important. You want to establish your pricing and that can seem like a very huge task, but it's something that should take a lot of thought and consideration. And the first thing I think you should do is to research your market and competition. Get a really good grasp on who the other local businesses are all around you. Find out what they offer, what their pricing looks like, and establish how what you have to offer is unique and different to them. I do want to say here, there is a big difference between being inspired by someone and copying them. It is never okay to copy anything from someone else's business, whether it's photos, titles, descriptions in your website, any kind of copy, anything like that, just don't do it. Uh, trust me, I've seen cases where this has happened. It hasn't been good. Sites have been shut down. 
I've had personal instances where someone copied my website. It sucks, so just don't do it, okay? So now we need to set up our packages. I definitely recommend starting out with three packages, a basic one, a middle one, and an exclusive one. Your basic one is going to be not much. Your middle one is gonna be where you want everyone to go, and the exclusive one is going to be like all the bells and whistles. Base those price packages off of the quality product you're going to offer and try to stay close to local competitors pricing at least until you build your portfolio of work. And let me just say this, undercutting prices isn't always the answer. I know it can be hard. I know you can probably see someone's price and think I can come down $25 of that and I'm gonna get all their business. While undercutting prices tends to be the way that a lot of new photo booth owners go, I do wanna say it really does bring the entire industry down with it because someone else will come along and start a photo booth business near you and undercut your pricing. And then it's always just a race. So instead, I really wanna recommend you add value to your business. Consider what everyone else is doing in your area and think about how you can either improve or bring something unique and different to your business. Is, does anyone in your area have a flower wall rental? Do they have audio guest books? Do they do video guest books? Try and think of what you can add value instead of taking away. Okay, now that we've done some research, we've established our packages and pricing, we can set up your CRM. And this may seem like an unessential part of starting and just getting ready to start your business, but I set up my CRM before I even started my business and it was probably the best thing I ever did. And I'll tell you why. But first, let's talk about what even is a CRM. A CRM is a customer relationship manager and it's designed to manage all of your client communications. The one I personally use is called HoneyBook, but there are others like Check Cherry and Boothbook, I think, that many have had success with. Uh, I'll put all of those links down below for you to review and contrast. I use my CRM to manage my clients, offer digital signing of contracts, and collect payments from my clients. I'm able to grab a retainer from them and I'm able to get full payment. I'm able to do payment plans. There's so much you can do within the CRM. It is worth its weight in gold. I even gather event details in the form of questionnaires within the platform. I've got email templates within that platform. So it's been an absolute lifesaver for my business and I honestly can't imagine running a successful business without it especially for the fact of having a digital contract on there. It's, it's amazing. So I do have several videos where I go over HoneyBook in detail that I'll link below for you in the description. So you can look through that and study it and see if that's something that's gonna work for you. Now, last but certainly not least, it is time to set up your website. As you're probably researching, many photo booth companies that I've noticed have used sites such as Squarespace, Wix, or GoDaddy. I feel like Squarespace is probably one that people use where they have a lot more control of design. That's what a lot of website designers use to create websites. So it's totally up to you and your preference, your budget, and really what you want to do with your business and your business model. I definitely recommend doing a bit of research to find out which site works best for you. I personally use GoDaddy for my website and found their website builder to be really easy to use and edit. I used a template that they offered within the pricing. It was no low cost to no cost. And it was one of those drag and drop situations. And I really love how it turned out. If you choose to go the do-it-yourself route, here's some things I want you to keep in mind. Your website may be the very first thing your client sees, so it needs to represent you and your company well. And what I mean by that is, if someone is Googling photo booths near me and your company pops up, you want your website to show exactly who you are, what you have to offer, all of that stuff. I recommend finding a domain that has some professional templates that you can customize so you can put your best foot forward. My number one tip is keep it simple. You don't need to have your life story on there or long paragraphs on reasons why a photo booth is important. 
Odds are, if they made it to your site, they're curious about what you have to offer anyways, and they wanna know how much it costs and how to book you. So make sure that that information is very, very clear and readily available to them. Also make sure that you have a booking link in that very first section that they land on. You don't wanna have them work hard for it or scroll down or try and find the button. You want it to be very, very clear where they can click and where they can book. So there are three elements that I really want you to focus on within your website. Number one, where you service. This is gonna be very good for SEO, but you also need to make it clear to your customer where you service. If you're in Dallas, Texas, and someone is finding you from Louisiana, that's probably not gonna work out. So make sure your location is very clear. Number two, clarify what you have to offer, your packages, your prices. You can do starting at prices if you don't wanna put your full prices on there. That's a really great option. And number three, make sure it's very, very clear how they can book you. A booking link, reserve your web day link, anything like that. Always consider the client's experience when you are building your website. Keep it simple, keep it focused. Other important elements are optimizing your website for SEO, which is a beast to learn. So for that, I would recommend either doing some extensive research, which let's be honest, there's so much on YouTube that you probably could do a really great job researching this, or you can invest in a professional who can help you walk through it. Again, this totally depends on your financial situation and how much you wanna invest in the beginning. As a bonus, I recommend definitely setting up a Google My Business page. This is a free business profile page that makes you searchable on Google, which is absolutely essential. It also offers clients a way to leave you a review, and it's just been amazing. So definitely, definitely recommend taking the time to set up a Google My Business profile. It's free. You gotta do it. So I'll include some additional resources about Google My Business below for you. We talked about it in the podcast, so I'll definitely share those resources below. All right, there you have it. Those are the three things that you can do to set up your business before you even get your photo booth in your hands. I hope this has been helpful. If you haven't joined our community already, we have an amazing Facebook group that is perfect for beginners or those who are looking to get started to kind of ask those beginner questions. My absolute goal in creating the group is to have a really safe place where people could come and no question was dumb or stupid. I never wanted anyone to feel like they couldn't ask a question in there. So that's my goal. That's the culture we've built there and I hope we can see you there. I'll link that below as well. Um, listen, we are all learning and growing together after all, and I'm so thankful that you're here with us. I look forward to see you on the next video. Bye.